الحمدللہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على سید الانبیاء والمرسلین اما بعد فاعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الصلاة والسلام علیک یا رسول اللہ وعلا آلک و اصحابک یا حبیب اللہ الصلاة والسلام علیک یا نبی اللہ وعلا آلک و اصحابک یا نور اللہ Welcome back to your viewers of Madani Channel to the final episode within our series Exemplary Devotees. Today's topic is the female companion's sacrifices for Islam, their devotion towards the Prophet ﷺ. Because throughout these 14 previous episodes, we have been mentioning about the male companions and males and their devotion towards the Prophet ﷺ. The blessed female companions of the Prophet ﷺ do not fall short either in expressing their immense love and passion and devotion towards the Holy Prophet ﷺ. It really gives the Muslim men an eye-opener to how much the Muslim women have sacrificed for the deen of Islam. And my dear viewers of Madani channel, I would like to commence by mentioning the excellence of Salat ala nabi The beloved Prophet ﷺ has said, Whoever writes, whoever writes Salat upon me in a book, angels will continue to seek forgiveness for that individual as long as my name remains within it. Subhanallah. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. My dear viewers of Madani channel, Subhanallah, this is a great opportunity for the students of knowledge and for generally, mashallah, any person, any Muslim who wishes to gain the forgiveness and the dua of the angels, that in our books we should write Salat ala Nabi. For example, writing in the Arabic language, As Salatu wa Salamu alayka ya Rasulullah. Or writing any type of Salat ala Nabi within your book, inshallah, as long as the name of the Prophet ﷺ remains within the book, you will be obtaining this excellence. Subhanallah. The blessed female companions, which are known as the Sahabiyat of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they showed immense love and devotion for Islam to protect the message of Islam so that the deen of Islam can further propagate throughout the world. And my dear viewers of Madani channel, I would like to start off with the famous account of the sister of Sayyidina Umar Farooq Azam radiallahu ta'ala anhum. Before accepting Islam, Amir al-Mu'mineen Sayyidina Umar Farooq Azam anhu was severely against and opposing those who would become believers. The sister of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu, Sayyidatuna Fatima bint Khattab radiallahu anha and her husband Sayyidina Sa'id bin Zayd radiallahu anhu became Muslims at the beginning of Islam. But they concealed their Islam out of fear of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhum. And it was also the command of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam that at the beginning stages of Islam, those who had embraced Islam would hide their iman so that they wouldn't be prosecuted or harmed by the disbelievers. When Sayyidina Umar Farooq Azam radiallahu anhu became aware that his own sister and his brother-in-law have accepted Islam, he became infuriated. And he directly went straight to his sister's home. The door was shut and the voice of Quranic recitation could be heard from inside the home. So when he anhu, knocked upon the door, the person who came towards the door looked and he saw that it was Sayyidina Umar anhu, standing at the door, who at that time was not a believer. And all of the people within the home began to hide themselves in the corners of the home. And when his sister opened the door, he radiallahu anhu shouted and he said, Oh, the enemy of your own life, have you also accepted Islam? He radiallahu anhu then pounced on his brother-in-law, Sayyidina Sa'id bin Zayd radiallahu anhu, grabbing his beard, dragging him to the ground. His sister, Sayyida Fatima bint Khattab radiallahu anha, 
grabbed hold of him in order to save her husband. He radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he struck her so hard that her earrings broke, falling to the ground and causing her to bleed from her blessed face. Despite this difficulty and this pain, his sister Sayyida Fatima bint Khattab radiallahu anha very bravely said in front of her brother, Oh Umar, listen carefully, do whatever you want with us, but we will never ever turn away from Islam. As soon as he radiallahu heard, heard these words from his own sister, and he saw his sister that her face had blood on it, and it was due to his actions, and he heard her emotive and passionate words, his heart immediately softened. And he stood silently for a short while, and he then reflected, and then he said, Show me what you are reciting. Thus, his blessed sister, Sayyida Fatima bint Khattab radiallahu anha, showed him pages of the Holy Quran, presented them before him. And he radiallahu anhu recited a few verses of Surah Al Hadid attentively. And he began to tremble. And the effect of the truthfulness of the words of the Holy Quran struck his heart. And when he recited these verse, and when he radiallahu anhu reached this blessed verse, Aminu billahi wa rasulih, believe in Allah and his messenger, he radiallahu anhu could not control himself and tears began to flow from his eyes and every part of his body began to tremble and he loudly exclaimed, Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. He radiallahu ta'ala anhu quickly went to the home of Sayyiduna Zayd bin Arqam radiallahu ta'ala anhu in order to embrace Islam on the hands of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He radiallahu ta'ala anhu took the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all of the Muslims to the Kaaba and announced his Islam. Subhanallah azza wa jal. My dear viewers of Madhini Channel, from this first account, we see the passion, the religious zeal and enthusiasm of the blessed sister of Sayyida Umar radiallahu anhu, Sayyida Fatima bint Khattab radiallahu anha. Her passion for the deen, her love for Islam, her love for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. That no matter what difficulty may befall us, we will never ever leave the fold of Islam. We also learn the powerful effect of the Holy Quran, the true book of Allah, that if it is recited in front of an individual and the mercy of Allah is upon that individual, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will place the light of guidance in his heart and the listener will embrace these words and he will accept the message of Islam. And my dear viewers of Madani channel, we also learn the amount of difficulty that those who accepted and embraced Islam at the early stages at the beginning of Islam, how much difficulty they faced. So we must reflect over our lives that when we are going through a difficult time in our life, in our Islam, in our worships, in our deen, then we should also remain firm, reflect over these accounts of these pious people and especially the Sahabiyat, the female companions of the Prophet ﷺ, they went through immense difficulty. A blessed Sahabiyah, Sayyidatuna Sumayyah radiallahu ta'ala anha, who was the mother of the famous companion of the Prophet, Sayyiduna Ammar bin Yasir radiallahu ta'ala anhu. She is that courageous woman who has the honor of being the first female martyr of Islam. She radiallahu ta'ala anha was the first amongst the women to present her blood and strengthen the roots of Islam. Her acceptance of Islam became a crime at that time and the staunch disbelievers subjected her to such oppressions and torments that are beyond our imagination. Thus, it has been narrated that when the Prophet ﷺ would witness her with her son, Sayyiduna Ammar, and her husband, Sayyiduna Yasir radiallahu anhuma, bearing the difficulties in the scorching deserts of Mecca, he ﷺ would say, O oh family of Yasir, have patience, for you is the promise of paradise. The people of Mecca and especially the enemy of Islam, Abu Jahl, subjected them to every kind of pain and torment in whichever way he could. One of the things that she was made to face was to wear an iron armor in the scorching heat of Arabia. She radiallahu anha bore all of this, but she did not turn away from Islam. 
My dear viewers of Madani channel, we must reflect for a moment that these, why are these punishments and difficulties coming? Because they have embraced Islam and the disbelievers and the enemies of Islam could not bear that Islam and the message of Islam, the true message of Islam would be spread to the masses and they would try to put them under such difficulty that they would turn away from the religion. But they did not know that these individuals who are the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu they were chosen by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Himself, by the Creator of the universe Himself. He selected those individuals who had the purest of hearts and the strongest of faiths. And my dear viewers of Madani channel, we must reflect upon the account of the first female martyr of Islam. And if we go through any difficulty within our lives, we must remember these accounts and observe patience, supplicate in the court of Allah and teach our children to remain patient upon our difficult times. Our life will have its ups and downs. We will go through times of happiness and joy with our loved ones, but we will also face difficulty, oppression, torment and difficulties. And we must reflect upon the life of these personalities to give us hope. We must study our religion of Islam. We must listen to speeches from those authentic Sunni scholars or Mubalighin of Da'at Islami who are delivering it directly from the works of the scholars of the deen so that we can understand how much difficulty our Muslim pious predecessors went through to preserve the message of Islam. My dear viewers of Madani channel, we learn and we see her patience and steadfastness in Islam. Today people mention the male companions and the male people who serve the religion. But we need to reflect over the female companions of Islam and how much they, their patience and steadfastness were truly a slap on the face of the enemies of Islam, the leaders of Quraysh, because they try to forcefully oppress them and try to make them change their faith. But the Muslims, and especially the female Muslims of Islam, showed their immense strength, their patience and steadfastness, and their istiqamat on the deen of Islam. And we too must also do so. And how did Sayyidah Sumayya radiallahu anha embrace martyrdom? My dear viewers of Madani channel, how this happened was Abu Jahl, who was one of the leaders of Quraysh, who was a staunch disbeliever. He once had a spear in his hand and he threatened her by saying, do not recite the kalima, do not recite the proclamation of faith, otherwise I will strike you with this spear. She courageously, Sayyidah Sumayya radiallahu anha, began to recite the kalima, the proclamation of faith, that I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah who is the true creator and lord of the entire world. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is his distinguished bondsman and honorable messenger. Abu Jahl heard the words and the, the power of Iman from Sayyidah Sumayya radiallahu anha, overwhelmed with rage, he struck her forcefully and she radiallahu anha became covered in blood, falling to the ground and attained martyrdom. Allahu Akbar. My dear viewers of Madrin channel, we can see again the first female martyr of Islam is Sayyidah Sumayya radiallahu ta'ala anha. The era that she lived in was very difficult, which was the same time as the Prophet ﷺ. Even if a non-Muslim was to study the life of the Prophet ﷺ, throughout it with a clean and sincere heart, he will truly be braced and he will be blessed to understand why Muslims have this passion for the religion? Why there's so many Muslims around the world? Because those who study Islam, they are able to understand how much difficulties they went through. And if a person like the Prophet ﷺ, who brought the message of Islam to the masses, if this was just for money or for fame or just to attain some sort of kingdomship, then a person would not go through such difficulty like the Prophet ﷺ went through, like his family went through, his own children, his blessed wives and the companions went through. Because people at a certain level, they can bear difficulty. But afterwards they turn away and they say, okay, we were just, we were not true in our claim. But the Prophet ﷺ and the companions faced difficulty and stared at difficulty with their eyes. They observed it and they did not turn away. This is also a true message and the true understanding of the message of Islam. That this is the true message from God, the true message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. My dear viewers of Madani channel, 
another account was in the life of Sayyidatuna Umm Sharik radiallahu ta'ala anha where she had such zeal and religious passion to preach the deen and when she had embraced Islam she was more worried about her salvation in the hereafter be when she is presented before her creator rather than the difficulties and the threats of the enemies of Islam in front of her. So what she would do was she would go in the day and the night and preach to the women of Quraysh regarding Islam. And when the people of Makkah heard about this, when they were informed about this, they captured her and they said, if it wasn't for your tribe, then we would have severely punished you. But because of your tribe, we will not punish you, but we will not allow you to stay within the city of Makkah. So we will take a sigh of relief by exiling you out of your own city of Makkah and you will go to Medina where the Muslims are and where the final Prophet of Allah is. So they made her ride upon a camel. Look at the enmity of the enemies of Islam. Look at their hatred for Muslims. That They made her ride on a camel which had no saddle, no cloth, nor any rain. And look at the difficulty. Those who have ridden on camels and horses, they would know why there is a need of a saddle, why there is need of cloths, and why there is need of a rain. So they forced her to sit on this. And when they would stop at different locations to make camp, they would tie her in the open heat of the sun. Of the Remember the desert and scorching heat of Arabia. And they themselves would sit in the shade. This continued for three days. They left her there in the scorching heat. And she had nothing to eat. They did not feed her. They did not give her any water. This is the treatment of the disbelievers. And look at this. May we, may we be sacrificed upon her steadfastness. In addition to bearing the difficulties of the journey, as well as the scorching heat of Arabia, she also bore the pangs of hunger and thirst for the sake of Islam. And she did not let go of patience, my dear viewers of Madani channel. Ultimately, when she radiallahu anha began to lose her senses, when she was, began to fall unconscious, the divine mercy of Allah covered her. And such a grace was showered upon her that those who subjected her to oppression and cruelty, they repented and became Muslims herself after witnessing this account. The hunters became the hunted. What happened was that one day, during the days where they were setting up camp and she was in the scorching heat of Arabia. What happened is that she suddenly felt coolness upon her chest. When she عنها, looked up towards the sky, she saw that a bucket, a pitcher of water had appeared from the vastness of the heavens. She, عنها, she had drunk a bit of that water. Her hands were tied. So the, the, the bucket of water was pouring onto her and she, was, she drank a bit of that water. And after she drank the water, the, the bucket of water rose again. After some time, the pitcher of water appeared again and she drank water again. And then it was raised once again. This happened several times. And when the water slowly entered her body, she regained her strength. And the entire pitcher was given to her and she drank it all and she poured the, the rest of the water over her, her body and her clothes. When the disbelievers returned and they saw that there were signs of water and wetness upon her and she, they found her in a good and well state, they asked, did you untie yourself and drink water from our water skins? And she denied this saying, how is this possible? You tied me. And she informed them of what really happened, but they did not believe it at all. However, they did say that if you are truthful and if your religion is the truth, then what we're going to do is check our own water skins. And if the water is still as we left them, then we will believe that you have said absolute truth that water has come from the unseen. And when they checked their water skins, they realized that their water, the amount of water that was in them was the exact amount that they left. And they all embraced Islam. Allahu Akbar. My dear viewers of Madani channel, we understand from this that the piety and when a person is patient upon difficulty, when he is upon the true religion of Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps him from the unseen. And when we reflect upon their lives, the difficulty that the companions bore in order to remain steadfast upon the religion, we as Muslims should gain strength from this. We as Muslims should gain motivation and gain this steadfastness and patience in our difficult times, whether we may face illnesses, problems, loss of family members, 
Maybe we have lost in our businesses. Maybe we are going through poverty. Maybe we are going through difficulty upon difficulty. Our family members are ill. We are, we are going through a difficult time. We are struck by a calamity. We must remember the difficulty that the Sahabiyat, the female companions of the Prophet ajma'een, went through and how they have taught us that truly Islam was spread via sacrifices. We Alhamdulillah are born in a Muslim household. The Adhan, the call to prayer was recited within our ear. The Iqama, the announcement was called in our ear. We seen our parents in a religious environment. We were brought up in a religious environment. We have no difficulty in acting upon the religion. But unfortunately today we see Muslims on a mass scale, on a large scale, not acting upon the religion. My dear views of Madani channel, we have to reflect over our state. We have to ponder over the difficulty that the female companions anhunna, went through. And my dear viewers of Madani channel, I would like to present you one final account from the life of a female companion. It was been reported a satanic rumor had spread during the battle of Uhud that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi had been martyred. Hearing this, a female companion from the tribe of Banu Dinar could not control her emotions and she left her home. And on the way towards the battlefield, she met different companions and they informed her of the martyrdom of her father. And she asked them, leave this. I didn't ask about my father that he has been martyred. I said, I'm asking you, how is the Messenger of Allah? They told her that, the, that we are unaware of the state of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then she went further. She, another companion came and to, her told her that her husband has passed away. Her husband has been martyred in the battle of Uhud. Then she went on further saying, how is the Messenger of Allah? They did not give a reply. And then she, another companion came to her as she further proceeded towards the battlefield that her brother has passed away. But she did not even care the slightest regarding this. She was worried about the Prophet of Allah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the final Prophet of Allah. And she kept asking the people that tell me, how is my master, how is my beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? When she was informed that Alhamdulillah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is absolutely fine. She was still not satisfied and she said, I will not be completely at ease until I see with my own eyes that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is fine. When the people finally took her to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and she saw the prophetic grace herself, she uncontrollably said, Kullu musibatin ba'daka jalalun ya Rasulullah. O Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, throughout the journey I heard that I've lost every family member of mine. I am now left without any a guardian over my head. I have lost my father, I have lost my husband, I have lost my brother. Ya Rasulullah, kullu musibatin ba'daka jalalun. Every difficulty after I know, O Messenger of Allah, that you are fine. Every difficulty that befalls us Muslims, every difficulty that befalls us is insignificant. My dear viewers of Madani channel, this is the passion of the pure female companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The sacrifices that they faced, the difficulties they endured out of love for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. These are the true exemplary devotees of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I would like to pose a few questions. I would like to give a final message that now my dear viewers of Madani channel, how much are we sacrificing for the religion? How much are we giving our time for the religion? that we are studying our religion. How much are we acting upon our religion? Today, unfortunately, when it comes time to acting upon the religion, when it comes to giving charities to help the Muslim Ummah, we are taking a step back. Whereas this is not the way of the Muslims. This is not the teaching of Islam. We need to be like those exemplary role models of ours who we love and we look up to. And we believe every single companion of the Prophet Wasallam is a paradise dweller, will enter the abode of paradise. And this is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with them. And they all are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I will give you a few final moments. I would like to now pose to you, what is our state as Muslims today? How is our attachment to our religion? Do we just for a few pounds, just for a few wealth, just for some wealth, are we sacrificing our religion? Are we sacrificing our prayers? Unfortunately, today it is seen widely that the Muslims 
are sacrificing their religion over the world. Whereas we saw and we see in the life of our companions and the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, our pious predecessors, the Prophet ﷺ himself, that he sacrificed. They sacrificed the world for the hereafter, for the sake of Islam. And today we are the complete opposite. So when, my dear viewers of Madhuri Channel, how can we get this mindset? When we attach ourselves with a religious environment, then inshallah azawajal, we will be inspired to follow in the footsteps of the blessed companions of the Prophet The Muslim men will become inspired in following the male companions of the Prophet And when the female, the Muslim females, when they study the lives of the female companions radiallahu ta'ala anhunna, then they will become inspired to remain patient, to remain subservient to the message of Islam. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes all of us true, sincere devotees of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. This is the final episode of our series. I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts this little effort of ours in His pure and majestic court. And I pray that you have all benefited from this and you continue to watch these programs, to watch them again and again, to learn the lessons of the lives of the companions radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his mercy upon all of you and may allah grant us steadfastness upon iman for the sake of the steadfastness of the companions of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam until next time keep watching madani channel sallu ala al habib sallallahu ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they are the exemplary devotees they are Exemplary devotees, they are the exemplary devotees, they are the exemplary devotees.